Hi everyone, we're back here in the Axminster Skills Centre. Today we're going to be looking at the woodcut bowl saver. I want to take you through the process of getting a blank from rough section, log section like this, through to setting the bowl saver up and starting to take out your bowls from the centre of your blanks. There's a couple of bowl savers on the market now, so the woodcut do the Max 3 and the standard. To be honest, this is a 14 inch bowl blank, it's a bit of monkey puzzle, so quite a hard tough timber, um, but it's only 14 inches, so we're going to go with the standard bowl saver. We're not going to skip through any of the details, we will take out some of the drudgery, the, the rough in the bowl down, but when it comes to setup, you're going to see everything. Even if we make the odd mistake here and there, we're going to learn together, set everything up and make, I think, probably a nest of three bowls out of this. The timber's semi-wet. So it's been down a few months, but obviously a bowl blank of this size is not going to dry that much. So um, that's where we're starting. And I'm guessing sort of similar starting point that most of you are going to be starting with. There are a few things to go through. Obviously safety on the lathe we're going to look at. And we're going to look at what makes these two bowl savers different as well. And the templates that you get in the, in the kit to make life easier when it comes to setting up. So stick with us. We're about to start roughing down and start nesting our bowls. Okay, so we're going to rough down our bowl blank. Like we've already said, this is a piece of monkey puzzle. So it's quite a tough timber. There's none of those knots, none of those branch entry areas that are characteristic to monkey puzzle. So it's going to be a fairly smooth timber, I'm hoping. It's semi-dry, so it's not completely green. It's, it hasn't been fully seasoned, so we're in about a halfway position at the moment. To be honest, a big lump like this, we're never going to fully season and keep it in one piece. So this is, this is really saving this piece of timber by, by hollowing it now. I'm going to put my PPE on in a moment. That includes a dust visor, so protect me from the dust, and a shield to protect my face in case of anything flying off the machine. But also, we're generating a lot of noise here, so I'm going to wear my ear protection as well. In terms of the, of the lathe, this is the AT406 trade machine. It's got a two horsepower motor. Now that's quite important for the coring part of the exercise. We need something with a, a good amount of power there. But I've also put the belt setting down to its lowest torque. So that means it's going to deliver more power to the machine. Just like gears on a bicycle, we're going down to first gear. So it's going to give us a little bit more strength there behind the machine. We're going to rough the outside of the bowl to our rough bowl shape and then create a 100 mil foot on the bottom. And for that one, I'm going to use the Evolution SK114 chuck um, with Type G gripper jaws. So they've got a good strong grip as well. Okay, so I think we're about to start. So I'm going to get my, um, my PPE on. Nice half inch bowl gouge there. So 12 mil bowl gouge. And at the moment, I don't know what speed. I'm going to start at zero and slowly wind up. Suspect I'll probably get to about three or 400. I'll take a few cuts off when it's nice and even. Then I can get the speed up a little bit faster. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So here goes. Okay, so there, we've roughed the bowl blank down. What we need to do now is create a foot that we can hold it in our Type G gripper jaws. Now, I've measured the jaws, so I've opened the jaws, so there's a small gap between them, around about a six mil gap between the jaws. I've measured them, they're about 90 mil on the internal diameter, so that's the size we're gonna create for our foot here. I've set the calipers. As you can see though, at the moment, there's a long way to go, so we'll start roughing a bit of that away. Once we've done the foot, we can start shaping the actual outside of the bowl, okay? So back with the, the PPE.
Okay, so there we are. We've roughed the, the, the shape of the bowl down. There are a few tears. That's not important at this stage. This is a rough turn piece. So what has to happen once we've done the inside, we're going to leave it extra thick. The bowl can then dry much quicker than it would do in a solid form. Once it's dried fully, we can then remount the bowl, the bowl and tidy both the inside surface, get down to final thickness and tidy the inside as well. And the foot's also been sized. I've sized that to the 90 mil that we spoke about earlier. So pretty much all that's left to do now is take the tailstock away, clean up the um, point where the tailstock centre was, and then we can dismount this and get it in our chuck ready for coring. Okay, so we've roughed down, we've created our foot. What we need to do now is start thinking about setting up the bowl saver itself. So at the moment, we've got the bowl on a faceplate, so we're going to take the bowl off the lathe. So just engage the spindle lock. I've got a spanner here just to make things a bit easier. I've used a smaller faceplate here only because I want to get a few bowls out of this one and if I use a, a really big face plate then the screw holes could potentially be in the way. So I've just doubled up on the screws, slightly longer ones than normal, just to give me a few more options later on. Okay, so before we do anything with the bowl, we're just going to pop that down to one side. I'm going to use a centre. This is a tailstock centre, I know that, but all I'm going to use it for at the moment is just to give myself a centre height to set up the bowl saver. So, tool rest can come out. Okay, so we're using the standard bowl saver here. So, we've got to set this collar to allow this cutter head to be on centre height. So what we're going to do, pop it in there just for the moment, pinch it up with the, the spindle lock on the saddle, and now just adjust up a little bit. There we are, that's okay there. So that's that pinched up, but we want to adjust the collar now. So we're going to adjust the collar so that sits down on the shoulder of our saddle and then we don't have to move it anymore. There we go, that drops down, lock him in position. Now every time we come back to that machine, that's already set at the centre height, all good to go. So that can just come out just for the moment and come away. Okay, so now we're going to mount the chuck and we can put the bowl back on the lathe and get everything set up ready for actually hollowing or for coring the bowls out. So there's the chuck, like I say, we've got 90 mil diameter in there. We can now bring the bowl to the chuck. You can bring the bowl to the chuck and then both to the lathe if you wish, it's just my preference. Make sure everything's seated nicely. Before you tighten right up, just make sure that nothing really bad's gone wrong. Then get a couple of hands on your chuck, or chuck key, give it a proper, proper tighten up. The jaws in the, um, or the centre of these jaws, they're a gripper section, so they're designed to physically bite in, so these are going to give a nice maximum amount of grip there. Before we start hollowing now, I'm just going to clean up that surface. Again, it's an optional, you don't have to do it, it's just what I prefer to do. So we're going to clean that surface up, then we're going to mount the, the bowl corer up, get him set. And just before we do that though, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the sharpening. So these are the individual blades for the, the bowl saver. They're a sterite tip to the blades and all I tend to use is a little diamond sharpening card. Very, fairly carefully, just going to sharpen the front of that one. Just a couple of passes. The idea is that we keep the tip sharp rather than sharpen it once it goes blunt. So a couple of passes every time you make a cut that should be enough to keep it nice and sharp and ready to to work for you so back with the pp on we're just going to skim the surface the reason i'm keeping the tailstock there is that's important for holding the bowl core in a moment we need that as part of the hold mechanism so that will stay there so let's start let's just clean that surface up
Okay, so we've got the bowl prepared. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about earlier is, and I've just done this because of my own experience, is we've created a dovetail recess. So each time we core out a bowl, we can easily quite quickly flip that over back onto the chuck, tidy the back of the, the, the new bowl up, create that foot again, and then get it straight back in the chuck ready to go. If you don't do that, then it means screwing it back onto the face plate and going through that whole process again. It's just, I just find that easier and a little bit quicker really. So now we can start thinking about setting up the bowl corer. So the tool rest needs to come away. Remember we've previously set up the height of the corer itself. That's already done. So that needs to go in. We're going to line up the face of the corer with the bowl and also now start thinking about the depth or thickness of bowl that you want to create to start with. Woodcut supply templates with all of the coring systems. With the Big Max 3 you get three templates because you've got three blades. So these come in paper form, you then put them on to a hard back in MDF plywood, something like that. A hard back in to create sort of longer lasting templates. And also with the standard one we're going to use, you get the two because of the two blades as well. At the moment we're using the biggest blade, so that means the biggest template out of the pack. And what that will do is give us a depth. If we think about the actual curve cutter on our bowl corer, that's going in a true arc around. So this is set. Here it says the center of the bolt, so the bolt here. And this will give me the backside of the cut. So this is going to give us how far we can go in. I want to leave about around about 25 to 30 mil of wall thickness. And I'd like to have that fairly even throughout. So I'm going to set that to the bolt. So I need to come a fair ways in. So there, the centre of the bolt's lining up, and it's lining up with where I want the thickness or the back of the bolt to, to be. And I'm also now setting up this wall thickness here. Like I say, it's between 25 and 30 mil. That will allow the bowl movement. So once we come to re -true the bowl, there'll still be enough solid material in there to get a nice round form. I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to make sure everything's tightened up. We now need to bring the tailstock close. So the tailstock needs to support the back of the bowl corer here. So that slots straight in. The reason there's movement here is to accommodate the movement that we've just given the bowl saver in terms of wall thickness. So now that's set, we can lock everything down. There's a, a number of things you'll need to lock up. So make sure your tailstock's locked in position. Your adjustment screw down here is nice and tight. Everything in terms of the tool rest is tight, including the spindle lock there. Everything is nice and firm and ready to go. We've got good clearance, nothing touching the bowl core before we start. Okay, everything's set up. I'm double checking all the locking levers, making sure everything's nice and tight. The speed we're going to be running at, really a maximum of 600 revs for this sort of thing. I'm going to start off fairly slow though, around about 400, and then increase it as I get close to the center. We have to think, at the moment we're cutting side grain. Loves to be cut, no problem at all. But once we turn the corner at the bottom, we're then hitting end grain again. Also, surface speed is going to slow down, so I want to up my speed to a maximum of 600 revs. And you have to gauge that determining, determined on the timber you're using. This is fairly dry, again, it's going to be a little bit more abrasive. Okay, so we're about to start. You have to be aware, once you make contact to start with, it can be fairly aggressive. So just hold on to that handle, make sure you're fully supported and you've got ear protection and your dust visor on as well. So here goes.
Okay, so there's our first bowl out. You might want to reshape the inside with a bowl gouge just to make it nice and even. It's a little bit of difference there, but that's a, a nice deep bowl. We got the depth that I wanted. We're now going to go to number two. So don't forget already we've put that dovetail recess in there. So all we have to do now is keep the chuck on the lathe and expand into the recess. I'm going to use the same chuck. It might sound like a big surface or a big foot, but that foot can be taken off later. It's not a big deal. So there we are. If I just shape the foot, we'll remount that in the chuck and then we're going to go to the smaller blade now on the woodcut, on the, um, the bowl core, to take out our, um, our third bowl. Okay, so now we're working with the smaller blade, so the smaller template's going to be used. So I'm just gauging how deep I want this to go. And we're about there. So I can lock that tool rest in position. Start also thinking about the, the amount of wall thickness we're going to get. So I'm going to bring the cutter close, so let's come a little bit further away. Okay, so using the template, we're just making a guide as to where that cutting edge is going to come. If you th look at that cutting edge there, you can see the wall thickness. So there we are. That's about the right place now. I'm happy with this here. We're going to have less movement on a smaller bowl. And so it's slightly slimmer on its wall thickness. Now, because we brought it a long way this way, we're going to have to adjust this area now to, to meet up with our tail stock. So let's just undo that and get him in line. Bring the tail stock up, marry it all together line everything up, tighten up the tail stop stop, double check all of our clamps and again we're good to go. So there we are, the woodcut hollowers. We've got two sizes available. There's the standard that we use today, but if you're doing bowls over sort of 14 inches in, in diameter, then the Max 3 would be the one for you. A fairly hefty laser required, over two horsepower. This particular one's a two horsepower machine. It's quite a versatile piece of kit as well, and I hope today I've been able to show you a few little hints and tips about using it and uh, just to, to demystify it a little bit. It's quite a worthwhile tool if you're doing lots of bowls. Obviously, you're going to make far more money out of the timber that you're using and generate less waste as well. There we are, the woodcut coring system.